Okay, let's go for a ride. I want to take you down the street here and tell you a quick story. Currently, we're in the Weston area. Right near the Westbrook, the famous Westbrook Inn. Somewhere down one of these streets, we lived in a house that was a long time ago. I'm pretty sure I was about four years old, five. Anyways, one of these places, I'll never forget what happened one day. And uh, there was a family that lived across the street from us. To use a racist term, and I don't believe in race or racism, but in that terminology, they were a white family. And uh, back in 1975, racism was pretty well sanctioned by pretty well everybody. It was, it was okay. It was actually government policy still. And uh, you know, to, it was government policy to, to facilitate racism. We were still living within the British North America Act of 1867, even though we had a, uh, here it is, Ross Street. We got to be careful because uh, there really are gangs in this neighborhood and so I don't want to give away their position Gangsters Anyways that white family they didn't like us. We were uh, We were either uh, Indians to them or we were half-breeds uh, I don't know. I don't remember what they thought of us, but they didn't like us and uh, they harassed us a lot and there were two Métis families, uh, ourselves and uh, our cousins that lived just down the street. We just passed their house and uh, one day they decided they're going to fight us. They're going to fight the family. I, I, I don't remember all of the details. I'm sure the uncles can remember that better than me. But from what I remember, um, it was a huge battle and uh, all of a sudden the Métis gathered in front of our house and they fought that family and whoever else was helping them and it was a it was a real brawl and the aunties held us in the back room to keep us safe the police came I saw flashing red and blue, so I was curious and I ran to the front of the house. Now we're coming very close to the houses that I'm talking about. The house we lived in is probably, probably torn down and by the looks of it, the house that's brand new here to the right is probably the one that was built on top of it. But anyways, there was a big battle. The police came. The aunties tried to protect us, pulled me away from the window and hit us in the basement underneath the floorboards because the CFS was coming. Well, it wasn't called CFS back in those days. It was called Children's Aid Society. You didn't want them coming around because that was during the 60s scoop and they were scooping up kids left and right. Children's Aid Society is is a for-profit organization, I do believe. I could be wrong. But uh, they're in the business of uh, human trafficking in any case. 
for profit or not for profit it doesn't matter it's human trafficking is what it boils down to and uh, anyways I distinctly remember being little and seeing the nails poking through the, fo the floorboards and I looked up at them and I thought I could get scratched if I if I move around too much so I better just sit still so those kinds of things really did happen to us um, the police took away all the uncles the Children's Aid Society couldn't find the kids the aunties uh, were left alone and uh, we survived that day but we were very close to being taken away our lives could have ended up very very different not necessarily for the better although some people will tell you that those are the experts they know everything they don't have to read any books they're experts on Indians and Métis people half-breeds racism they know everything those guys they don't have to go to school they're so smart you know Canada and Canadian taxpayers they, they've been paying taxes for the assimilation programs that, that have been going on for the past 150 years to try and erase Aboriginal people out of existence to turn them into white men so I've psychologically profiled what it means to be a white man. It's not very nice. It's not very pretty. It's pretty gross. Um, if you could imagine uh, some of the most filthy, vile things that have been going on in history. And if you apply uh, Western... European philosophy and psychology to the problem that is endemic to the white race what you're going to discover is that it's all boiling down to patriarchy and the patriarch is a narcissistic psychopathic Machiavellian personality type all boiled down into one false identity I call it an artificial intelligence because it's that's what it is and they want us to become that they want to assimilate us into the white race which is a Machiavellian psychopathic narcissistic personality type that is artificial intelligence it's not real. And I would encourage you to like, follow, and subscribe. Sam Vaknin on YouTube. He talks all about that. He doesn't he doesn't apply race to his to his work. I apply race to his work. wanted to show you this neighborhood this this used to be called jig town because it was a neighborhood that was inhabited mostly by people of of uh, of, of, the, of the black race and again I, I'm not racist I, I'm just using the terminology that the race people the people who believe in race use they, they, they seem to identify by a color these were these are the projects gangsters um, these projects were largely inhabited by people of African descent 
and, I, and Africa has a lot of different ethnic groups. They, uh, some of them have uh, pretty fair skin, but if I'm being, if I'm being racist and using phenotype to describe the folks, I would say that they have short curly black hair with dark skin. People would call them black. The racists would call them black. So they came up with this word, jig town, short for jigaboo. Well, I didn't invent the word. I have a feeling it was a word invented by people of the white race when they racialize and discriminate. They use these uh, dehumanizing words to describe a group of people. In my last videos, it was pretty cold out. This place would have been filled with snow. That was back in February. It was uh, probably about minus 48. So the gangsters, the gangsters, they were uh, they were trying to stay warm inside the house or shelters. Now it's uh, spring, so they're out and about, they're around. I wanted to show you this place because this is a very famous place. Um, back in 1970, they, uh, the Métis people and the uh, some of the some of the First Nation people, they started to come from uh, up north and were looking for places to live and affordable housing. And so they, so this is where they came. They came to this, uh, to, to the projects, the projects. And this is how we racialize and segregate people. I don't use the term people of color because I, I don't want to reduce people to a color. I really don't believe in that. I think that we should stop doing that. I think that we objectify and dehumanize ourselves when we agree with the racist terminology and identify as a color. And that includes white people. These are the projects. So, affordable housing happens through no fault of these people. These people are not to be blamed for living in the projects. I gotta be careful here, there's children. I can't film the children, that's gotta protect their privacy. Through no fault of your, for your, of your own, You're born into an oppressed, oppressive system. We call it systemic racism. Today we call it Gilbert Park. Oh, I want to show you this. I want to show you this. I'm going to I'm going to pull over back up and you could see them putting up the cameras. And there's it looks like 3 or 4 cameras. 
but they're working on it. I want you to see this. This is this is really awesome. This is what you really want to see. Right here in Winnipeg on Gilbert Avenue. Do you see it? Can you see it? Can you see it? Gilbert and Chudley. I'm going to turn around again. And uh, give you another chance to see this. I don't know how many cameras we got in this neighborhood. But those cameras are there to watch you. To record you. To take... Take your picture. That's that's a treat for you to see. I'd imagine that some of the gangsters are shooting those out. That's why those guys are replacing them. Because believe you me, can't go down there. There's kids. Believe you me. People shoot each other around here. All right, I'm gonna pull over and uh, I just wanted to show you that neighborhood here.